still about a billion people in this world living without access to safe water. 6,000 people die every day of diarrhea, a completely preventable disease. Most of them are kids. Five billion people in this world live near or on polluted water bodies. We can't wait for government to lead on this. We've got to step up and do it ourselves. Engineers Without Borders has two areas of operation, working with communities and learning and change. These are implemented across three program areas, overseas, in Indigenous Australia, and through local initiative programs. Engineers Without Borders works with about 20 partner organizations in Southeast Asia. These are spread between Laos, Indonesia, Cambodia, Vietnam and Timor-Leste. We currently have volunteers in Cambodia, Vietnam and Timor-Leste. Cambodia is bordered by Thailand to the west, Laos to the north and Vietnam to the east and is populated by approximately 14.5 million people. The spoken language is Khmer. 40% or 5.8 million Cambodians live below the poverty line. In much of the country, there are very few options for providing safe drinking water. 1 in 12 children still die of diarrheal diseases. The project you'll be focusing on is located on the Tonle Sap Lake. The Tonle Sap is a unique part of the Mekong River system. Its flow changes direction twice a year, and the portion that forms the lake expands and shrinks dramatically with the seasons. From November to May, Cambodia's dry season, the Tonle Sap drains into the Mekong River at Phnom Penh. However, when the year's heavy rains begin in June, the Tonle Sap backs up to form an enormous lake. The Tonle Sap is the largest lake in Southeast Asia. 340,000 people live in the immediate vicinity of the lake and are supported by its resources. The Tonle Sap's rich fisheries provide up to 80% of the total protein intake of Cambodians. The lake's floodplain produces 12% of Cambodia's rice. One third of the population on and around the lake lives below the poverty line. There is virtually no waste management in rural areas of Cambodia. In the floating villages of the Tonle Sap, all rubbish is disposed of into the lake. Humans and livestock defecate directly into the water. Oil spills from boats are a constant problem. While surveys indicate that locals are concerned about the environmental and health impacts of dumping waste in the lake, they see no alternative solution. It follows that water quality and sanitation present problems to the locals of the Tonle Sap. The people use water taken directly from the lake for drinking, bathing, washing, and irrigation. Waterborne diseases such as typhoid fever, hepatitis, and diarrhea are prevalent. Bacteria levels around the floating houses are up to 10 times higher than in other areas of the lake. In certain areas around the Tonle Sap, less than 10% of the population have access to adequate sanitation. Few have access to latrines. Uh, as you may know, Cambodia has um, quite a checkered history. Um, fortunately, the last 10 years have been quite stable, and in those 10 years, the country's been developing quite quickly. But as we know, with fast development, the environment often suffers. And Communities have adopted several solutions to living on and around the water. Some people live in small, portable houses that can be moved to remain close to the shore as the lake expands and contracts. These houses are typically raised on relatively small stilts. 
Other buildings are permanent and raised on stilts up to 5 meters from the ground. They are surrounded by water during the wet seasons, but land-based during the dry season. Floating houses remain on the water and move with the height of the lake. Bamboo, steel drums, and plastic barrels are used for buoyancy. The construction quality of building types differs widely between people of varying means. Many are vulnerable to frequent storms. Sustainable use of biodiversity is important for the people of the Tonle Sap. The productive fisheries and agricultural land need to be well managed in order to preserve the area's natural value. Many local species are in danger, and a few, such as the Irrawaddy dolphin, have been lost. Produce from fisheries has decreased from 400,000 tons in earlier years to 233,000 tons recently. Forests around the lake have also been depleted. The area covered by forest has decreased by 75%. Transport is an issue all over Cambodia as roads are generally in poor condition. In the lake area, many roads are cut off during the wet season, isolating some communities. Stilted buildings are accessible by road during the dry season and boat during the wet season. On average, Tonle Sap locals are 10 kilometers away from the nearest market and 2.4 kilometers from the nearest primary school. For the Tonle Sap project, Engineers Without Borders is partnered with the nonprofit organization Live and Learn Environmental Education. Live and Learn is an Australian NGO created in 1992 that works in action-focused environmental education. In mid-2007, Live and Learn approached EWB to develop designs for latrines suitable for use in floating and stilted villages in Cambodia's flooding regions. Hello, my name is Kit Bun Thang. I am the country manager of Live and Learn Environmental Education in Cambodia. Live and Learn Environmental Education Cambodia is a non-government organization working in Cambodia to provide community with education and training on environment human rights, sustainable livelihood, ecotourism, and learning community development. Our, methodolo our methodology is education with action. This means we provide practical opportunity to implement and reinforce the message that we teach. Live and Learn is actively assisting Cambodian communities overcome challenges to their health and livelihoods, particularly those found on and around Lake Tonle Sap. One of the biggest challenges for the communities of the Tonle Sap is managing their waste and ensuring the lake remains a healthy source for their drinking water and food. Previous work with EWB has led to development of floating latrines for these communities, which have been piloted successfully. Much of the recent work has been following on from the momentum created by the research and designing completed under the EWB challenge in 2009. A waste management barge has been created to store the community's waste while it turns to rich soil for later productive use. Along with support and leadership from the community, there are plans to develop better housing techniques, biodigesters to help turn waste into fuel, and better waste management systems that will provide further attractive alternatives to the current environmentally degrading practices. Mentioned earlier, in 2009, Engineers Without Borders proposed a challenge to first-year engineering students. The challenge consisted of students working in teams to develop conceptual designs for projects identified by EWB's partners that contribute towards the sustainable development of disadvantaged communities. In 2009, 
2009, the challenge was for students to design an innovative and sustainable solution to address one of the following problem areas in Cambodian communities living on and around the Tonle Sap Lake and River. Waste management, housing and built infrastructure, water and sanitation, sustainable use of biodiversity, transport, energy, and finally education and information technology. Last year, nearly 7,500 students at 26 universities took part in the EWB Challenge. The winning design of the 2009 Challenge was a polyethylene bag biodigester to address waste management. The biodigester would allow community members to dispose of waste in a sanitary manner while producing useful biogas through anaerobic digestion. Floating waste management barge with the biodigester was selected as the project to be implemented. EWB innovators consist of students that have already completed an EWB challenge. Their goals are further technical and non-technical assessment of the project, detailed product or system definition, testing of a prototype model, and a detailed implementation plan for local community members. Being an EWB innovator means direct involvement with the project. Students will be supported by the local WA chapter project team and an in-country volunteer working with Live and Learn on the Tonle Sap. Yeah, my name is Judy Hagen and I'm working um, with Live and Learn on a floating latrine design project. Um, designing latrines for communities that live in floating houses on the Sap Lake, which is a large expanding lake in Cambodia. Um, I've been involved in the project a little bit since 2008, doing some field work and getting some data for the project, and since the beginning of this year, I've taken on the project management role. We go into uni thinking that it, all you need to be an engineer is to be good at maths and science, but learned a whole lot of stuff about communication, organisation, sustainable development, just all these aspects that you never knew about. Never, ever, 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 ever give up.